to make an api call or to communicate with the database we have to uh, switch to the different thread do the operation there and get some response via call back so this is what we usually do uh, when doing this kind of operations and we usually do with the help of either um, rx java which is of course another complex stuff to understand or we might have used the old school async task uh, but to overcome these kind of callbacks and to simplify your code and implement it in a neat structure there is some another concept in the picture that is here coroutines so why coroutines it actually simplifies your code uh, removes the boilerplate code there is no uh, need of callbacks uh, that means you can write your code in a, a sequential way and then it is very easy to implement so all these benefits we get when we start using the coroutines so let's go to the screen and implement core routines like a pro. I have created one sample project for the core routines where I have just added the dependencies. These are the dependencies for the core routines. That's it. So now we'll understand how core routine works, why core routines and few terminologies in the core routines. I have already told you that uh, core routines API allow us to write asynchronous code in a sequential manner. Or you can say it's just a way to simplify the code. Uh, which is used to manage long running tasks. That means it avoids the unnecessary boilerplate code which comes with the callbacks. Now, uh, I'll go step by step. So I would say uh, don't skip this video anywhere because otherwise you will miss few important steps. Now, uh, there are two very important concepts here is what is suspend and what is resume. So suspend here, pause the execution of current core routine. That means it saves all the current local variables this is where suspend comes into the picture and there is a opposite of this that is resume that continues the suspend coroutine from the place it was post simple now let's see how it works and how can we implement that firstly let's create one ui to understand what is the problem statement where we have to use coroutines Let's drag and drop three buttons and perform some operation on that. So we have our UI ready. Uh, here we have created four buttons. Three buttons are used to perform some random task and fourth button is used to upload something. It is just to simulate the uploading or you can say API call, right? And this is where we use the core routines. Now what we will do here is we will upload some file and in the parallel we will increment two values and we'll see how it will look without coroutines, how it will behave. Let's do that. Let's access the views here. Let's give two initial values. Now let's implement the click listeners and increment their values. Now let's create one function to simulate the uploading. Okay, we have let's say private fun upload files. Perfect. Here we will use for loop just to simulate some long running operation. Let's say I'm logging it. For example, let's say tag and uploading i. Perfect. This is what we will use to simulate the operation. And let's say call this function from the upload button. Now here three things. One is we are uploading something, and second is whenever we click on the first and second button, it will increment the first and second count and show that in the UI. Let's see how it looks now. Okay, now let's click on first task. Yes, it is incrementing. Click on second task. Yes, it is incrementing. Now let's go to our locate and logs are tag. Okay, click on upload files. Yes, it is uploading. Now click on this first one. If you can see here, it is freezed. I'll show you again is freezed if you click on this one yes so i'm clicking on these buttons and this is freezed because 
our thread is busy and yes again you can see our application is crashed this is what i wanted to show you if, if we don't switch to another thread then our application may experience laggings or it will crash because there are too many operations working on main thread and this is where we need to switch to different thread and this is where coroutines comes into the picture so this is the reason we need coroutines first concept is clear now let's discuss about what is scope in coroutines scope is basically an interface which provides scope of the coroutines scope means context of the coroutines that means uh, by default coroutines don't help us to keep track of them or you can say keep track of any work that is being done by them and of course we have to manage coroutines very carefully otherwise of course there will be coroutine leaks in the memory and this is where we must start all our coroutines in some context or in some scope let's say scope means this coroutine scope is all over the application this coroutine scope is only in these kind of files so this is where scope comes into the picture there are so many kind of scopes in coroutines for example we have global scope we also have coroutine scope global scope is to launch the top level coroutines and coroutine scope is basically the scope of your activity or fragment now second very important concept here is dispatcher dispatcher means thread where coroutine should run thread means either could be main thread io thread or default thread main thread means launch coroutine in main thread or ui thread io thread means launch coroutine in a background thread and default means for cpu intensive task or some logical operation like sorting an array list something like that now third and last very important concept here is builder what is builder in coroutines there are two kind of builders one is launch and second is async await builder means which is used to launch coroutines now launch here is to launch a new coroutine without blocking the current thread and async and await means if we want to get some result as a return value then we need to use async await otherwise if we don't need any return value then we can directly use the launch so these are the combination of things we should know before even using the coroutines these are the very basic steps for the coroutines now only last part is remaining how can we implement the coroutines using all these combinations now you just saw that your application was lagging or crashed when we didn't use the coroutines now let's do one thing let's use coroutines and call that upload function inside the coroutines now how can we do that this is a function where we have used this upload files function let's create one coroutine or your first coroutine first is your scope which i just told let's use coroutine scope this is a inbuilt function now it requires your dispatcher let's use dispatchers and then i need to use io for background thread then coroutine builder that your launch because i don't need any return value and here i will call this function we will see how it looks this is your first coroutine and that's it you don't have to do anything extra see how simple it is you don't have to use async rl java also complex stuff this is very very simple let's run your application and see how it looks perfect we have our application let's do the same thing click on upload it should start uploading now click on this one it is increment it is not freezing the ui let's click on this one it is also incrementing it is not freezing the ui this is what we want to implement via coroutines your application is not lagging your application is not even crashing now in the last two very important concepts one is suspend which i have not shown you how and where it works and second very important concept is if let's say i want to communicate to my main thread from the background thread and how can we do that earlier we used to use callbacks but here we don't have to do that let's create one function quickly and see how it works let's create one function for example to simulate the api call api let's say we have our this function 
now let's make this function as a suspend function now i had already told you that suspend function property is it can be suspended and resumed right that means whenever a coroutine is suspended the current stack frame of the function is copied and saved in the memory but whenever the function resumes after completing its task the stack frame is copied back from where it was saved and starts running again this is the beauty of the coroutines one important concept here is let's say i want to call this function for example anywhere now how can i do that let's say i am calling this function call api this one it will give me an error saying that suspend function should be called only from a coroutine or another suspend function point to be noted we cannot call suspend function from a normal function this must be called from a coroutine so let's create one coroutine again coroutine scope which i just told you dispatchers dot io dot launch enter let's call this function inside that and error will go this is the example i wanted to show you about the suspend now last important concept is how can i communicate from background thread to main thread or ui thread this is very very simple we just have to use with context and here i'll have to give that with which thread i want to communicate that is your main thread that's it and here i can access any ui work this is how neatly we can implement the coroutines now there are few other concepts we should know about coroutines like async await uh, some other scopes like view model scope live data scope tracking coroutines via jobs structured concurrency life cycle scope exception handling so all these concepts i will cover in the second part of the coroutines now let's discuss some interview questions on the coroutines to give you some basic idea these are some important interview questions which is widely asked during your interviews first is your what is launch and async await that is a coroutine builder i told you already that launch is to launch the coroutine where we don't want any kind of written type or written value but async await is where we need some written value from the coroutine next is your what is view model scope coroutine scope global scope there are different kind of scopes coroutine scope for example is scope to your activity or fragment likewise view model scope is scope to your view model and global scope is globally to your whole application third very important question is what is dispatcher and what are different kind of dispatchers we just studied three dispatchers io main and default io for background thread main for ui thread default for cpu intensive task that's it how can we track the coroutines that is why jobs or context or you can say scopes this is how we can track the coroutines combination of job and scope is how we track the coroutines and last very important question is exception handling in coroutines and this is done with the help of try catch yes so that's it guys this is what i wanted to convey in the core routines second part of this video i will upload very very soon you can go out and check the description of this video or else you can go and watch my youtube channel and you will find that second part of this video so thank you so much guys i hope that you have got good insight on core routines but still if you have any questions write down in the comment section i will reply as soon as possible with that i would say please share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also learn about the core routines Keep watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.